So the UK Warehousing Association is a trade body uh, and we represent our member companies. We've got about a thousand member companies and more than half of them are companies who've got less than 100,000 square feet in total. So those guys are definitely in, in the category you've asked about. But of course, some of our bigger members uh, also have individual properties which are less than 100,000 square feet as well. So it's a really critical part of what we do for our members uh, and it's important that I understand that sector. Every single organisation of any description that operates within the economy is reliant on some sort of supply chain. Um, and all of those supply chains are much more complicated than politicians expect them to be. And they all rely on warehousing, sometimes warehousing all around the world. Um, but of course, for what's going on here in the UK economy, an element of UK warehousing is essential to nearly every business. Uh, so we're really critical to economic growth, uh, sometimes described as an enabling sector, but I think it probably goes deeper than that, that you know, we're, we're just a key part of everything about economic growth. There are some other good news stories as well about uh, the role that we play in the economy. And one of them is to do with levelling up, because there's more demand uh, for warehousing in the Midlands and the North than there is around London. So we automatically feed into that government priority. Uh, and uh, there are also great opportunities for warehousing to be part of the solution when it comes to a net zero economy, a circular economy, uh, and also opportunities for social mobility because our workplaces tend to be a meritocracy. So it's just a good news story all around. Warehousing is critically important to everything in the economy. Well, there are lots of things that need to change in terms of policy, and we've touched on planning policy before, but I'd just like to add another element, which is to do with uh, solar panels on warehouse rooftops. I think this is something uh, where, as a country, we need to do much better. At the moment, only about 5% of warehouses have any solar panels on the rooftop, uh, and one of the reasons for that is because uh, the way that our energy markets are structured and regulated uh, is just really out of date. Uh, it's associated with a very old-fashioned way of doing electricity which just doesn't work for the modern economy so I'd like to see reform of Ofgem and improvements in the energy markets. Um, I think there are lots of things that we need to improve in terms of our planning system and probably the first one is uh, to wean ourselves off this obsession with resi. Uh, so residential development is really important uh, but it's not the only important element of development and, and the focus is so firmly on residential uh, that I think it actually ends up being counterproductive because residential development is only ever going to be successful when it's part of a balanced bigger plan which includes things like schools and doctor surgeries and the high street but also in there I would say industrial and logistics is crucially important partly in terms of what it delivers for householders but also in terms of the employment opportunities that it provides. Well it starts at schools doesn't it? You know we expect something like 10% of our school children to end up working in the logistics sector and yet we never mention it to them. In the national curriculum logistics and warehousing are completely absent which I think is a travesty and I very much look forward to to the idea of a T level in logistics which might help to redress the balance. Um, more broadly speaking, I guess members of the general public will have some grasp of the transport part of logistics because it's more readily visible, but most people have never been inside a warehouse and I'd like to put that right. Uh, one of the things that I'll be doing in 2024 is visiting 80 warehouses, inviting local media, local politicians to come with me on those visits and shining a light on all the great stuff that goes on inside warehouses. So every kind of development needs to be sensitive to the location where it's going to be. And sometimes that can be, you know, you'd have to ask an architecture student, but there are some quite dramatic ways of doing something that's not necessarily in keeping with what existed there before, but still looks really interesting and exciting and, and can have a positive influence. Um, when it comes to industrial and logistics properties, I think we've seen over recent years uh, a real improvement in the way that they're built sympathetically to, uh, to the surroundings where they're based. Um, and of course the idea of uh, having economic growth is something that people in the local community could feel really positive about. I love the idea of co-location and I know um, a couple of people that I've spoken to are trialling it but it's not commonplace, it's not common practice in the UK market. Um, so I think potentially we, we might need some sort of uh, policy intervention from government, uh, from local authorities to really make it happen. Um, 
Although your question was, could it work? And I think if we had that, then yes, of course it could work because there's plenty of space in our market for all different types of industrial and logistics properties.